Crossfire here. So it's been roughly two years since the PS5 launch, and today we'll be looking at the good, the bad, suggested improvements, and what's on the horizon for this elusive next gen console. So the PS5 launched two years ago at the end of 2020. And since then, PS5 exclusives have been Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, a remake of Demon Souls, Destruction All-Stars, one of my favorites, Returnal, Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate, Marvel Spider-Man Remastered, Ghostwire Tokyo, a stunning remake of The Last of Us Part One. GT7, the pint sized tech demo Astro's Playroom, there's also been director's cut versions like Ghost of Tsushima, and who could forget Hideo Kojima's Death Stranding. Finally, we've got some PS5, PS4 cross gen exclusives like God of War Ragnarok, the stunning Horizon Forbidden West, Sackboy A Big Adventure. Spider-Man Miles Morales and finally the adorable Stray. So I think the first obvious call out is that after two years the PS5 exclusives are somewhat limited but I guess you can't blame the game companies for wanting to monetize their software on multiple platforms. You'll also notice that some of these titles are in fact remastered from older PS4 versions and then re-released to take advantage of the PS5's tech, allowing them to run at higher resolutions or frame rates. But still, after playing most of these titles on the PS5, with many other non-exclusive games, I can safely say that I've been blown away by the step up in capabilities of the tech. Especially with the ray tracing, improved frame rates, and VRR support. So the previous PS4 Pro could handle 4K at 30 FPS, as opposed to the PS5 which supports 4K at 60 and 120 FPS. It can also, once optimized, handle 8K at 60 FPS, assuming the firmware from Sony ever gets released. So you can clearly see the 8K image on the PS5 box. Some people assuming that at launch the PS5 would support games in 8K, when in fact the PS5 would only be compatible with 8K displays at launch and only after a future system update would it be able to output resolutions of up to 8K when that content became available. So where are the native 8K games? Well, there is one game called The Tourist, originally a Switch release game that renders internally at 8K resolution, but then uses a technique called super sampling aliasing to downscale it to 4K. So the TV you're watching this on now, Samsung 75 inch QN900B, does really well at 4K upscaling. So the gameplay you see here is downscaled and then upscaled. That kinda sucks. So when Sony finally enables 8K rendered games on the PS5 with that future system update, then a small patch would be released for the tourist so it renders in native 8K. And that's where we are unfortunately when it comes to the PS5 and 8K. So the two options currently available are either the digital or the disc edition. The disc edition is essentially the more expensive option coming in at an extra 100 US dollars but with the following additional features. It enables you to play PS5 disc format games via the Ultra HD Blu-ray disc drive. Considering the PS5 is backwards compatible, it also allows you to play any old PS4 disc based games. It also allows you to play 4K Blu-ray movies and videos. You can share disc based games with your friends to save money. And the second hand market is good if you want to sell games you don't want to play anymore. Or buy games for cheaper prices. I did pick up God of War Ragnarok for $35 AUD cheaper. And just like the digital edition, you can also buy games digitally. While the digital edition's only real advantage is that 
you don't need to keep track of discs anymore or swap them out to play other games. Let's not forget the I'll take any console that's in stock edition. Some of you watching this video may be cursing at the screen right now, unable to get any edition at a reasonable price from any trusted retailer. It's been a monumental headache due to scalping and price gouging, not to mention the chip shortages and supply issues from Sony. To add salt into the wound, Sony also bumped the cost of a PS5 by roughly 10% in parts of Europe, Asia, and here in Australia recently due to inflation. So if you still haven't been able to grab one, the good news is Sony will increase their production to 30.5 million PS5 units in the fiscal year 2023. So in terms of the user interface, it's displayed in 4K HDR. It has the usual game icons and corresponding home screen wallpapers, which look nice. The experience of zipping around the icons and menus is super responsive and enjoyable. A really handy feature is when you have a game selected and you press the menu button on the controller, you get the option to check for updates, delete, or move the game to another playable storage area like the installed M.2 internal SSD. Alternatively, you can move to an external SSD if you no longer want to play it and need the space. Now I know the trophy screen was overhauled and most people like it, but from someone who just doesn't see the point of trophy info, I would just love it if I could disable it everywhere. The share pop-up for screenshots and videos was overhauled and it is much more intuitive now, allowing you to easily share screenshots, record, save gameplay, screen share, and stream to Twitch or YouTube. So instead of scrolling aimlessly through your entire catalog of games, Folders or game lists were introduced to help you organize your games better and they did a pretty good job here. I've created three by genre. One nuance I still have with the interface is that when I want to use the bottom bar menu, the news icons still show up by default when I'm pressing the PlayStation button. And I still need to navigate down to use it, which is crazy after two years. And in terms of the user experience, all the games load very quickly, run very smoothly, which allows me to enjoy the actual gameplay or cutscenes without those annoying wait times where the machine is doing its thing. So keeping the console and games up to date is super easy. Just stick it in rest mode and ensure these two options are toggled on. This ensures when you turn the machine on next time that the games are updated and ready to play. Now the form factor of the PS5 is quite different from the previous PS4. It's a lot bigger and it has these changeable curving panels that fan out at the top and make it look quite futuristic. It has two orientations. Horizontally, it fits into my TV unit comfortably, which is convenient, and vertically, it looks even better, but doesn't suit my setup. The versatile stand enables these two different orientations, and I think it works better for the vertical option thanks to the fixable screw in the base. The horizontal option doesn't have this and is prone to slipping and getting off center. Now the plates are removable if customization is your thing and they are easy to change out. There are also a number of different brands which sell plates online. Sony has also been selling their own colored options for a while now, but in terms of my setup, I've stuck with the white as I also have the Switch OLED in white and prefer the harmonized look. But customization is something I definitely will be considering in the future. So over the last two years, we've had the much improved DualSense controller, which is about to be further upgraded with the DualSense Edge, and I'll touch on this later in the video. So the DualSense controller introduced haptic feedback. Improving the feeling of collisions, especially in driving games, and running or jumping on different surfaces in platform adventure games. Next, adaptive triggers, which are great for two reasons. One, they give a small amount of resistance when playing first person shooters. To emulate how a trigger feels in real life, this was a nice touch and added to the immersion and overall experience. They also adjust to the activity or task that you're focused on. Of course, if you want to go back to the old school feel of a controller, you can always turn these features off in the settings. Another cool feature is the improved speaker. This complements the haptic feedback with audio cues like here in the sand in Astro's Playroom. Alongside that is a built-in microphone. It does have some downsides though as the microphone is on by default. So each time you power on and load a multiplayer game, others can hear you unless you remember to turn it off. You can however adjust to turn off by default or when logged in via the settings. You can also mute and unmute your mic by clicking the small button under the PlayStation button. The glowing indicator also lets you know you're muted, another cool feature. Now in terms of form factor, they are noticeably bigger compared to previous iterations. 
They also have these new perforated edges, which are actually nice to hold and contribute to the ergonomic feel. And just like the colored plates, which you can swap out, you can customize your overall PS5 setup with a matching controller. In terms of battery life, I typically get six to eight hours. The variance relates to the type of game I'm playing. But considering I wouldn't use this amount of battery in a typical gaming session, it's more than adequate for me. But I can understand if you're a hardcore gamer, you may be disappointed. However, this is easily countered by having multiple controllers on hand that are charging or by using a long charge cable attached to the controller while you play. Now storage has been a touchy subject, especially for first adopters, as the default storage got maxed out quickly, forcing people to move games to an external SSD or delete them to make room for new releases. This was due to a smaller storage capacity of 825 gigabytes, of which only 677 is actually usable. And as you can see, it's maxed out here. This compared to the PS4 Pro, which had one terabyte with 872 gigabytes usable, Obviously, with the size of the game files increasing, you would expect the internal storage to increase as well. Sony taking advantage of consumers here. To overcome this, you have two options. Connect an external SSD drive like the 2TB SanDisk Extreme Pro. However, with an external drive, you cannot play directly from that drive, having to copy the games back and forth to play. The other option is to add an M.2 SSD drive with a heatsink and thermal pad. This will expand the console's internal storage. This feature was unlocked by Sony in September 2021. When purchasing one, make sure you check that it's PS5 compatible. I've gone for this Silicon Power XS70 1TB SSD with heatsink, which has speeds of up to 7300 megabits per second. It took five minutes to install and now gives me an extra terabyte in total playable space. Sony overhauled PS Plus to be more competitive with Microsoft's Game Pass in mid-2022. The revamped subscription service now comes in three tiers, Essential, Extra and Deluxe. Essential at $12 a month or $80 a year, this tier is largely the same as the old PS Plus and includes two monthly downloadable games, store discounts, cloud saves and online multiplayer. Extra includes the benefits of the Essential tier while adding a catalogue of up to 400 PS4 and PS5 games available for downloading. The catalogue includes first and third party games like Death Stranding, God of War, Spider-Man, Spider-Man Miles Morales, Mortal Kombat 11 and Returnal. This tier costs $19 AUD a month or $135 AUD per year and I'm currently trying it out. Deluxe adds an additional 340 classic games to stream from the PS1, 2, 3 and PSP. It also has time-limited game trials that let you play the game for two hours before deciding to buy it. The Deluxe costs 22 a month or $155 a year. Subscribers can stream on their PS4 and PS5 as well. So after using the PlayStation app for some time now, I can confirm it does enhance the overall experience of owning a PS5. The four areas that it's good at are one, discovery and notifications. So shopping for new releases or pre-ordering games, getting up to date news on all the games you've purchased. You can set notifications so that if you're waiting for a game to install and want to go away, do something else. You get an update when it's ready to play. Next, controlling your console. Now, as mentioned before, if you buy a game that's ready to download, you can kick that download off while on the go or at work. So when you get home, it's ready to play. You can also manage your storage if you kick off a download and run out of space. Doing this remotely via the app means you will need to delete something though, instead of moving it to another storage location. Third, connecting with friends. You can voice chat with your PSN friends as well if you want to organize your next session or just have a laugh. And finally, capture, download and share content. Which was added in early 2022. Allows you to watch PS5 captured content on your mobile, download it to your mobile device, share it with your PSN friends via GameBase, or share via your preferred social media. So apart from the colored PS5 plates and controllers, here are a few of my favorite accessories since launch. The PS5 Pulse 3D wireless headset is an official PlayStation headset designed specifically to deliver 3D audio from the PS5. The headset comes with a wireless USB adapter, so you'll also be able to use this headset with your computer and expect to get up to 12 hours of wireless play. Coming in at 139 AUD, these are worth it for the 3D audio alone. 
So if your DualSense controller just isn't cutting it for GT7 or any other driving game, then that's where the Thrustmaster T248 steering wheel and pedals come into play. It has dynamic force feedback, a realistic leather wheel, four different pressure modes for the brakes, magnetic paddle shifters, and a display for game data like RPM and best lap times. A little pricey though at 487 AUD. So any serious fighting gamer is going to need a compatible PS5 fight stick, and the Victrix Pro is a top contender. Currently available in purple and white, the arcade stick itself is made out of aircraft grade aluminium. This one is on the expensive side however at 659 AUD. Looking forward we have the soon to be released DualSense Edge controller which features swappable stick caps, comes with three and I'm sure aftermarket options will appear. Replaceable stick modules, given that stick drift has blighted most modern controllers it's good that you'll be able to replace each for 30 AUD. Changeable back buttons with custom mapping, extra button bindings are always good. This is currently in a swappable lozenge or lever shape. Adjustable trigger stops and dead zones, so having variable stops to make it easy to shoot while still utilizing haptic feedback and trigger tension. Tunable stick sensitivity is great for applying the right amount of pressure to hit that sweet spot. The USB braided cable with lock feature is good for those in competitive play. Quick swap control profile and settings is good if you're sharing controllers. Adjust audio with help by the directional control pad for a good balance between mic control and game sounds is actually handy. The zip case is a nice touch for travelers and competition players. Pre-release reviews show concerns for a weaker battery than the current DualSense. And a hefty price tag at 339 AUD. Next we have the PlayStation VR 2, scheduled to release on the 22nd of Feb 23. Which uses sense controllers with touch sensor tech, each featuring an analog stick and tracking ring, which is a huge improvement over the Move controller on the VR1. They utilize adaptive triggers and haptic feedback from the dual sense controllers. The display is Fresnel OLED with 110 degree field of vision and uses twin 4K HDR displays with refresh rates of between 90 and 120 hertz. Foveate rendering uses eye tracking to improve graphical fidelity without compromising on frame rates. 20 games are expected at launch. Horizon Call of the Mountain is exclusively built for the PSVR 2 and will showcase the inclusion of haptic feedback in the headset. Other games include Resident Evil Village, The Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners Chapter 2, Retribution, Firewall Ultra, and No Man's Sky. Ultimately, if Sony deliver a worthy next-gen VR gaming machine, people will be fighting to get one just like the PS5. And early reports from journalists have confirmed they are impressed with the new tech and overall experience. Price at 880 AUD standalone or 960 bundled with Horizon Call of the Mountain. The current PS5 disc-based version is rumored to be discontinued in Q3 2023 and replaced with a new slimmer digital version alongside a detachable disk drive. The disk drive will cost around 150 AUD and is widely believed to be a way to decrease the company's production costs. This is also great news for those that purchase the digital edition and want to add the disk drive to their setup. Discord integration is scheduled to release as early as March 2023. Discord is a voice chat and messaging app that has become indispensable for many gamers in recent years. As cross-platform play becomes increasingly common, being able to connect through Discord is a great option for gamers. Now there were so many new games announced at the Game Awards 2022 that 2023 gaming is looking pretty solid. A few of the standout PS5 games include Forspoken, a beautiful looking console exclusive from Square Enix due to release in January. Dead Space Remake, which will remove loading screens and update the graphics, also in January. Wild Hearts. The Monster Hunter Rival focuses on co-op monster hunting due out in Feb. Atomic Heart, the horror game from Munfish, is plenty scary as it is intriguing, also in February. Star Wars Jedi Survivor, the follow-up to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, is scheduled for March. Dead Island 2. This sequel to the quirky zombie killer is set in downtown LA and is due out in April. Street Fighter 6, for the fighting game fans, this is scheduled to hit shelves in June. And finally, Diablo 4, in what's gearing up to be another Blizzard masterpiece 10 years in the making, also set for a June release. 
So even though the exclusives have been limited, the overall games list has been good. Combine this with ray tracing, the improvements to frame rate, VRR and a solid online gaming experience, and it's a 4.5 here. Regardless of its size, the PS5's design is futuristic. It has a beautiful UI and the UX is much improved with minimal loading. The ergonomic DualSense controllers with haptic feedback and adaptive triggers were a nice upgrade and will be further enhanced with the DualSense Edge. Complement that with the upcoming PS VR2 and it's another 4.5. Scalpers and Sony's supply chain issues have really put a scar on the PS5's rollout. Combine that with the reduced amount of storage space from its PS4 Pro predecessor and expensive SSD upgrades and it's a 3 here. The PS5 Disc Edition is the best value for money coming in at 800 AUD. However, to get the most out of the machine, you likely need a storage upgrade, headset and PS Plus. However, even with these additions, there is no other experience to match the PS5. A 4 here. In conclusion, if you're still waiting for a PS5, you're missing out on the best console all there is. The games, improvements in tech and streamlined controls all lead to a fun and immersive experience. I just hope that in the next two years we see the console push to its max with cracking titles in 4k at 120fps and 8k at 60. Thanks for watching, appreciate any feedback in the comments, until next time.